Good morning. Welcome to Evaluating Commercial and Assets. Uh, this is a follow-up from our acid-based titration experiment from last week. It, it flows directly into it. So if you have any questions about some of the, the equipment that we're using, the burettes and the pipettes, they're explained in some detail in this lab, but in more detail in the acid-based titration uh, lab that we posted last week. So for now, what this week's lab is, is an opportunity to look into the real-world applications of chemistry that we're learning in class. This week, we're going to evaluate commercial acids that contain basic substances that neutralize excess stomach acid and can relieve heartburn and indigestion. These tablets are different from other classes of compounds like proton pump inhibitors, um, long-term antacid or long-term heartburn medication. Uh, those block the production of acid in the stomach. This just neutralizes it. Some things we're going to evaluate are how well these antacid tablets work, as well as their cost effectiveness. Uh, we're going to determine how much acid each tablet neutralizes and how much it costs to do so. So we've got all the vocabulary from last week's titration. That's still important, but there's going to be two more terms that you need to know for this one, okay? Uh, back titration. So what that means is you take a known amount of excess reactant and you add it to a reaction. After the reaction, this excess is quantified by a titration. So in this one, we're going to add an excess of hydrochloric acid, and then we're going to back titrate it with NaOH. And you'll see, and, and your question might be, why? Well, that's related to uh, the word anacid, your other vocabulary word today, which is a weekly basic metal salt that neutralizes your stomach acid, so we're hydrochloric acid, right? Um, direct titration is impractical because of the solubility of the tablet, uh, the, that the end point of a strong acid, strong base reaction is sharper. Uh, that means that the end point is reached at a specific point and it's really easy to discern. If you remember last week we were like drop, 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 and then drop, oh my gosh, that's so pink uh, when, the, when our indicator changed. That's uh, because it's a strong acid, strong base titration. Uh, the tablets that we use this week are a weaker base, so we're going to react those with hydrochloric acid initially so that we can compare NaOH and HCl, which are, you know, a strong acid and a strong base. Uh, the end point of a weak base strong acid reaction is acidic. So if we had just mixed this tablet with water and we were titrating it with HCl or something, it'll be, the end point will be slightly acidic. So finding a good indicator for this can be kind of difficult. All indicators have a different pH range, uh, and the indicators that we want to work with have a slightly basic pH range. They have nice, sharp color changes. There are two types of antacid tablets. There's carbonate salts here and hydroxide salts here. Uh, the carbonate, in the, uh, this is the net ionic equation, the carbonate salts react with two hydrogens from the acid. Um, that makes this H2CO3, this uh, carbonic acid, which then devolves into carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and H2O, which is a liquid and stays. Um, and then calcium is just, you know, aqueous the whole time. Um, and even though, so we talked, you know, net ionic equations, we only deal with the stuff that's like doing something, right? Uh, the calcium in this one, like we're adding CaCO3 as an, a solid. So the calcium is kind of doing something, right? It's, it's becoming aqueous. Um, so in hydroxide salts, we have MgOH, uh, OH2, excuse me. And that also reacts with two hydrogen. And that just goes straight to magnesium and uh, water. So if you see a fizz, then you probably got a carbonate salt because that's the thing that makes the gas. So our back titration is going to be H plus from that HCl, that excess HCl that we added, uh, and then the OH from the NaOH is going to go to H2O liquid, and you can think about it kind of like there's our HCl, there's our NaOH, uh, and that goes to NaCl aqueous and H2O liquid. So that's what's happening. This is what's happening during the back titration. This is the net ionic equation for that. Uh, the calculations for this week, let's scroll on over to them. They are similar to last week. So you need to determine the starting amount of hydrochloric acid used. That 
will let you determine the moles of excess hydrochloric acid that was left over from the reaction with the antacid tablet. You can determine this easily by remembering that one equivalent of NaOH from the burette reacts with one equivalent of the leftover HCl, right? It's a one-to-one -one ratio of NaOH to HCl. Great. Um, we find the amount of HCl neutralized by the tablet by just subtracting the excess moles of HCl from the initial moles of HCl. So here we're adding 0 0.025 liters. We'll figure out what the moles were that we added. Uh, the moles of excess HCl, there's our volume of NaOH titrant used. And we'll figure out the moles of that. Then you subtract moles from moles. Uh, so moles of acid neutralized by antacid is the initial moles of HCl minus the excess moles of HCl. Uh, and then you're going to figure out your mass effectiveness and your cost effectiveness. And I have to note, because people have made this mistake before, that these are in dollars. So if you see this dollar, it's 50 cents, it's not half a cent, it's half a dollar, it's 50 cents. So don't, don't make that mistake right at the end. Fumble it at the end zone. Uh, that's what we have for you. I hope you enjoy seeing the rest of the experiment. If you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, anyone on the, uh, the instructional team or Dr. Vitarelli, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Evaluating Commercial and Assets. Yeah, so as like last time, uh, you know, I have a prepared burette right here with the sodium hydroxide. Um, the initial reading is about 0.35 milliliters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare, you know, this Erlenmeyer flask. So uh, as before, we're going to add 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So we have this kind of our stock solution, I guess the dilute stock solution. Um, and I'm just going to pour this into this smaller beaker over here. This is uh, the 0 0.6 smaller, right? Yeah. Yeah, approximately. Um, and using this volumetric pipette as before, I'm going to get exactly 25 milliliters. So. And in case you forgot, what Matt's doing right now is he suck the pipette into the beaker. Um, and then he sort of gently put the squeezed bulb on top, so it's still a little bit loose. We're not jamming it all the way down. Uh, he's releasing the pressure on that bulb to draw up the 25 milliliters of dilute hydrochloric acid. Well, I guess 0 0.6 molar isn't that dilute, but still. Um, when he has to re-squeeze the bulb, he uh, blocks the top of the pipette with his finger um, and then puts it back on there. Uh, and he already pre-rinsed this before we started recording. Yeah, just because I showed it in the last. Yeah. So we're going way past that line and then it's a lot easier to release to the line, right? Yeah. So he's going to release down so that the meniscus nails onto that line right there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to add it to this Erlenmeyer, allowing gravity to release all the liquid. So we're going to we're going to show the whole experiment and everything we have to do, but if there's anything that you have questions about the last experiment we did, uh, the titration of acid and base was a, a little bit more of a detailed look at the titrations and their principles and how to use the pipette and the burette and the volumetric flask. Yep. So check that if you have any questions. Yeah. So now that I've added the HCl into this my flask, I'm going to increase the volume just with some water. Now usually we say acid to water, do what you ought to, but this is a pre-diluted HCl. So it already kind of has water in it. You're exactly right. So now 
as you can see over here, so these are, you know, this is a commercial antacid that we are going to evaluate. So this is what it looks like. Uh, you're going to pre-weigh a tablet that looks just like this, and you're going to crush it up really carefully into this, like, nice powder. And we're going to bring it over to this Erlenmeyer. And Matt weighed the one that he crushed that we're using, but yeah. he just left the second trial over there so you could see what it looked like. Yeah. Uh, and you weigh the antacid and the weighing paper together, then you weigh them the weighing paper on its own, and that's how you know. Yep. So now I'm just gonna swirl it. Now, if you notice, it's bubbling a little bit. Yeah. And there's this like, you know, white, you know, it's not really clear. So these antacid tablets have binders in them that keeps everything together. And then once it hits your stomach, well, you chew it apart, and then once it hits your stomach, then it, you know, releases the calcium. I'm sure this is a calcium tablet. Do you hear them? I do. I hope they yeah. can. Yeah. So I'm just gonna swirl it for a little bit. Um, Uh, so now the tablet has mostly dissolved except for the binders. Um, so now we're going to determine how much HCl is still left after the tablet reacted with, you know, some of the HCl that's in here. So we're first going to need our indicator before we titrate. We're going to use bromothymol blue. We're going to add about, you know, we're going to add 10 drops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Squirt it a little bit, and we're going to start titrating. I'm going to do this carefully. Since we already reacted a lot of HCl with the tablet, the endpoint might be closer than you think. It's a really good vigorous swirl. Thanks. And you're looking for like a little splash of color that should like show up, bloom, and then disappear at first, right? Yep. Yeah, this one's a little bit harder to see. We're looking for like a purple color. Like, can't really see it yet. Not yet. That happened fast. Yeah. So that's actually pretty good. That looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, so the yellow disappeared. It might tip for if you're unsure, because if you think maybe there might be some yellow left with titrations, is always make a note of what the volume is, then add like one more drop. And yeah. if the hue doesn't change, like it might get darker, but if the color itself like doesn't change, then you already wrote down your endpoint, so you're good. But if not, then you you can add like one more drop and you know what it is then. 
Yeah. So I'm just going to write down what it is right now. Yes. What is it right now? 5.65. Okay. Starts with a random piece of paper. Just for right now. And then we'll add one drop. I'm just going to make sure. Didn't really do anything. I didn't scroll yet. Oh shoot, I did a lot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So we're done. Yeah. Do you think so? This is the real endpoint. Yes. So what? Well, what we because, just did was the real endpoint. Right. Because it. The hue change. Exactly. The color yeah. so change. It, was it didn't like, just get darker. It looked in between that initial yellow and this. So right. what we had just there was the endpoint. Great.